Thank you, Ashley. A Washington woman stalked and threatened her most intimate moments exposed on the internet. It's called sextortion and it's spreading across the web almost too fast for authorities to track. Tonight, one woman shares her story with the hope she can stop these predators from ruining more innocent lives. Here's Jasmine Durachi. As a whole, it was great. Washington State University was the best decision I could have made for myself. Being a cheerleader opened up a lot of doors for me for relationships, for self-growth. I, I met all my lifelong friends. Student, athlete, outgoing, Alyssa Hawley never saw the attack coming. Like, I would leave my house and not think twice. Then one day sitting in class her sophomore year, she got an email. So I clicked on it and porn came onto the screen. Alyssa's face had been photoshopped onto naked women and a flood of disturbing images and messages would soon follow. Every time I opened my computer that I didn't want to do my homework, I didn't want to check my grades because I just didn't want to log in. The assault on her identity was inescapable. Messages were sent to her social circles. I think the first person that came to me that it got sent to was a couple of the guys on the Wazoo baseball team. Coaches, friends, professors, and even her family began receiving the images. Walking to class, like I didn't want to make eye contact with anybody. I was just so embarrassed. The attacker escalated his campaign of computer-generated terror. Hello, Miss Holly. I am writing to request that you do your best to enjoy the coming days. After that, I'm going to hunt you down. I'm going to cause you pain like you've never thought possible. Threats to end her life were sent from multiple fake email addresses and phone numbers. Hi, Alyssa. I want to squeeze your neck and watch you fade away forever. I'll keep your body for my own. I didn't go to the police for a while, and that's one of my biggest regrets, I think, is that I tried to handle it myself. When she finally did contact them... I think that the Pullman PD in my opinion, had never dealt with something like that before, so they didn't know what to do. Alyssa also filed reports with Snohomish PD and Seattle PD. I think that they all tried, but after months of trying without getting anywhere, they, they did give up. The sex torsion campaign against Alyssa started back in 2015 when local police departments had fewer resources to combat what was then a relatively new kind of computer crime. Today, as many as one in 10 scam emails use some sort of sex threat, according to security firm Barracuda Networks. And in Alyssa's case, the attacker was relentless. We changed my email two times. I had to change my email to an alias email. He found that one. The messages were cruel. And in his emails, he loved saying that I'm making my school look bad. I'm a disgrace to Wazoo. Days turned into weeks weeks into months with no clues to who this predator was. I completely understand why people commit suicide. Like, I was so consumed and so emotionally drained every single day. I was not myself for a solid couple years. She struggled with constant fear, shame, and suspicion. I genuinely questioned every single person around me. Then in 2017, Alyssa received another message. I was sitting on the floor watching TV and I got an email from the detective that has been working on this case. The constant attacks were finally going to end. I was like, oh my gosh. So I opened it and I just started crying. When the arrest happened, it wasn't in Pullman, but nearly 1,500 miles away in this town. Rochester, Minnesota. Federal agents captured this man, Eric Ronald Bulldwan, after several University of Colorado women athletes had reported they'd also been victimized. Bulldwan was sentenced to 14 years for those crimes, but investigators suspect he's potentially responsible for at least 50 more. Alyssa is believed to be one of them. I have no respect for him. I think he's disgusting. He didn't win and he, like, I won this. I'm not in jail and he is. Boldwan was sentenced to 14 years in prison for the Colorado crimes, but so far there is no closure for Alyssa's case. 
As she waits for justice, she focuses on how her experience has had positive outcomes. And unfortunately, it takes a situation like this to kind of get the ball rolling and to get people familiar with the steps that need to be taken. I feel stronger in myself knowing that if I can get through something like that, then I don't think there's a, like much that I can't get through. There's no telling how many fake photos of Alyssa are still out there. Alyssa's Facebook page is flooded every day with messages and friend requests from people who've seen them. But despite that, she refuses to let that stop her from living her life. She says to look for counseling and support groups. They exist on many college campuses, even if they aren't always publicized. And always keep fighting and advocating for yourself. From Studio Jasmine Duracci, NBC right now.